Hi everyone. Uh, today I am going to talk on uh, uh, the miscellaneous bacterium that is Actinomyces, uh, which are soil saprophytes and commensals of oral cavity, and they may cause for a disease actinomycosis in the oral, oral cavity uh, because of improper procedures or because of uh, improper oral hygienic conditions. So today we are going to talk about this particular organism. Before going back, we will see a case scenario on this particular aspect. A 51 years old male patient attended to surgical OPD with a supra gingival ulceration. Initially treated as of the ulcer and there was no good prognosis. Three weeks later, lesion appeared as slowly enlarging hard painless lump on the cheek which further ulcerated with discharging sinus. Discharges were collected and sent to the microbiology laboratory for examination. Case was treated with lengthy antibiotic administration and record from all the signs and symptoms of this particular condition. So this is the case scenario about the case of actomycosis where you can see the lesion, uh, you can see the lesion on cheek um, as a lumpy lesion and in the oral cavity also you can see the upper photograph will show the oral ulceration followed by dental caries. So there is a strong relation between the actinomyces and the uh, dental caries and other uh, oral lesions which we are going to discuss today. These actinomyces are gram positive, uh, catalase positive and non motile bacilli which assumes uh, branching filamentous like uh, structures and they are lacking photosynthetic pigment uh, and sensitive to antibiotics. Some of the anti cancer agents and immunosuppressive agents are being prepared from this species of this actinomyces. And uh, some people considered as transitional forms between bacteria and fungi because cell walls are present with muramic acid, prokaryotic uh, nuclei is present and they are sensitive to antibiotics. If it is really fungi, it, they may not be sensitive to the antibiotics and mycelial network with uh, branching filamentous structures are seen. That is the reason why the cell walls, the presence of muramic acid is a bacterial uh, uh, property and prokaryotic nuclei sensitive to antibiotics. Only thing is the mycelial network is with branching filaments suggestive of fungi. And important genera from the actinomyces are actinomyces, which is anaerobe and non acid fast, nocardia, another genus that is aerobe and acid fast, and another genus is actinomodera, which are aerobes and non acid fast. Next genus is streptomyces, which is again aerobe and non acid fast organisms, and third one is the thermoactinomyces genus which consists of thermophilic, uh, uh, thermophilic uh, species of actinomyces and they are responsible for hypersensitivity uh, pneumonitis. First we will see the actinomyces, uh, the important species of uh, actinomyces which are causing for human disease are actinomyces israeliae, actinomyces mary, actinomyces newslandiae, Actinomyces odontolyticum, which is the most important organism responsible for dental plague, and uh, Actinomyces gerinsoniae. These are the important um, Actinomyces species uh, which are responsible for uh, human disease. And Actinomyces uh, species are commensals in the oral cavity of man and animal, and they are soil saprophytes also. They are responsible for putrefication of vegetables. The common people getting involved with this uh, infections are rural young male persons, agriculture workers and the disease produced by this actomyces species is non-communicable disease. As I mentioned already they are gram positive non-acid fast anaerobes with branching mycelial network. The photograph on right side will show the morphology of this actomyces species. In the pathogenesis of this actinomyces, they are avirulent by themselves. Uh, the devitalized or dead tissue 
and when the breaks are there in mucosa they enter into the body by means of invasion and establishes the severe infection in the presence of the companion bacteria like bifidobacterium haemophilus haprophilus and bacteroids and echinella species um, of course they also individual also can produce the disease but in the environment where these hacknomyces are living if you are see, if the other organisms present which are mentioned below uh, they behave like more virulent strains and the env invasion of this bacterium into the uh, tissues responsible for intense inflammatory response which results in separative granulomas that is pyogranulomatous lesions you can see the pus as well as granulomatous lesions and the predisposing factors for this particular actinomycosis is periodontal disease the people who are already suffering with some periodontal disease i already showed the, the photograph uh, while talking about the case scenario and uh, other predisposing factors are a severe trauma or poor uh, oral hygiene any jaw fractures maxillofacial surgeries and periodont periapical odontitis in all these conditions some kind of devoidless tissue may gets remain in that particular area and this bacteria since it's an anaerobe it grows in that particular tissue where the blood supply is lacking and responsible for the disease manifestations and uh, if you see the disease proper this is a chronic granulomatous lesion with multiple abscess and uh, the fibrosis also seen at the site of involvement and sinus formation is possible that you can see on right side of the photograph how this lesions will appear in multiple openings on the cheek the external appearance of the lesions uh, these lesions are uh, slowly enlarging lesions which are hard to touch red in color and uh, so once you try to press over the lumps they never feel pain that is they are painless lumps no lymphatic involvement will be seen so there is no possibility for the enlargement of regional lymph nodes blood spread is possible to the liver brain and bone and causes for their uh, relevant lesions and uh, the different types of actinomycosis if you see first one among them is cervical facial actinomycosis uh, the main reason for this kind of cervical facial actinomycosis is odontogenic uh, lesions any uh, uh, oral lesions are responsible for this kind of actinomycosis a recent uh, history of tooth extraction are signs of tooth decay uh, like a dental cavity or a dental caries or the history of poor dental hygiene for uh, so many months or years leads to cervical facial actinomycosis and on the right side you can see the um, photograph with the recovery from the cervical facial actinomycosis where you can see the multiple openings and uh, healed by the scarification next variety of actinomycosis is suprajingival actinomycosis um, this mainly due to the poor oral hygiene actinomycosis is causes for the uh, causes caused by the actinomyces nuslandii and actinomyces odontolyticus these two important organisms are responsible for dental caries and third variety of this uh, subcutaneous disease is uh, actinomycotic mycetoma and where the lesions are seen on the right side you can see the photograph where the multiple signs are seen on the dorsum of the foot but much uh, reliable sample and bronchial secretions uh, also can be collected and collect the equal volumes of specimen and the saline and allow it to settle for some time and separate uh, granular type of uh, structures which are known as sulfur granules and these sulfur granules have to be examined uh, for their structure by staining method and then we have to see uh, the for the positive findings related to the disease and the needle aspiration also can be done from the sinuses and open biopsy um, has also been done from the lesion to subject for histopathological examination by h and e staining method so if the pus is available from the lesions it's best or uh, bronchial secretions also you can collect or needle aspirations from the sinuses also possible and open biopsy also 
useful type of uh, specimens. And uh, if you see the sulfur granules, which is a pathognomic feature of this particular uh, infection uh, at the time of diagnosis, these sulfur granules are uh, not related to any kind of sulfur with this. But the only thing is, they looks like uh, uh, sulfur granules with light uh, yellow in color, which are small uh, specks uh, to 5 millimeters in size. They are white or yellowish in color. And gram staining or by brown uh, ben modification, you can see gram positive hyphal filamentous structures in the center with the radiating uh, club shaped ends. Here in the photograph, you can see the central uh, area which are violet colored, uh, very tiny hyphal fragments are seen which are radiating to the periphery. In the center of that is a necrosed material. On the periphery, the extreme periphery of this uh, smear, you can see the club shaped uh, radiating structures. These are all due to the inflammatory process uh, because of this bacterial invasion. And the culture, they are micro aerophilic or anaerobic organisms grow very slowly, requires 3 to 4 days incubation period. Sometimes they may take 7 to 14 days also. And uh, on brain heart infusion agar with 5% blood, we can see the raised nodular uh, creamy colored uh, spidery colonies which resembles the molar teeth. Here uh, you can see the, the same type of uh, colonies in different photographs by different species of agnomystes. But in the lower photograph, you can see the raised nodular cream colored spidery colonies which are resembling the molar teeth. And in a liquid medium like a thiocalcular broth, you can see fluffy balls like uh, structures, especially by the Acnomyces israelii, where you can see the growth in the bottom of the tube, which is uniform with the uniform turbidity. The main reason for this uh, is uh, these organisms are anaerobes, they never uh, come to the nearer to the uh, environmental surface where the oxygen is present abundantly. So, in thiaglycolate broth, uh, the fluffy bars like lesions are produced by Acnomyces israelii in the bottom of the tube, whereas the uniform turbidity is produced by Acnomyces bovis. That shows that this is somehow aero tolerant species. Next, Acnomyces treatment is the high dose of penicillin is the drug of choice. We can prefer the tetracyclines and metronidazole also. And next modality of treatment is the surgical removal of affected tissue uh, by means of curettage of bone and resection of necrotic tissue, the excision of the sinus tracts. This all can be done by the dentist uh, to avoid from the, mm, this kind of acnomycotic uh, materials from the infected tissue. And prevention, the general care of the mouth that is uh, have to advise the individuals to go for uh, two times brushing in a day and uh, care of dental grooves because any food stuff which uh, captured in the dental grooves causes for the uh, dental caries by the presence of uh, some bacteria in the oral cavity and in this uh, dental caries these organisms which is commonly commensal commensal the oral cavity can invade into the dead tissue and produces this kind of uh, uh, lesions and dentures must be kept uh, clean. We should not throw here and there and that also we have to give it to the, this kind of advice also has to be given to the individual people who are on dentures. In case of children, mouth care is most important. Don't allow the child to fall asleep with a milk bottle. This is a common um, habit done by some of the mothers because to avoid the disturbance by the child, uh, during the night time due to the hungry, some mothers will uh, give the bottle like this. Uh, whenever they wake up with hungry, they then just put them in the, uh, the nipple of the bottle will put, the, put, put inside the mouth and they suck the milk and they sleep like that. So because of the continuous uh, presence of milk in the oral cavity results in the uh, dental caries, which again uh, source for the acnomyces infections. And fluoride application, uh, which slows the destruction of uh, enamel and uh, helps to repair the minor tooth decay. That's the reason why usually in um, the, what is that uh, to toothpaste also, 
uh, we prefer uh, fl fluorine preparations in that. Next one is sealants, a thin plastic coating that is painted over the grooves to prevent entrapment of food particles. So there won't be any kind of uh, dental, uh, sorry, dental caries and uh, there is no possibility for acnomycotic infections. And diet, uh, when uh, taking the sugar and the starch uh, type of foods, uh, swish and swallow after meal, simply to say, take some uh, mouthful of water and gargle it and uh, move the water in all corners of the oral cavity and again swallow it. That is swish and swallow method after meal is the best uh, method to avoid uh, the entrapment of food particles in the grooves of the teeth uh, to avoid the actomycosis. And next one is uh, Nocard deer, that's uh, Edmund Nocard first identified this uh, bacterium um, which are gram positive branching uh, filamentous bacilli similar to Actomyces, uh, but they differ uh, from uh, the first one being their uh, aerobes, this Nocard deer aerobes and uh, some are uh, pathogenic um, in nature. Uh, like uh, Nocardia asteroids, Nocardia brasiliensis, Nocardia modore. These are all the pathogenic uh, Nocardia species and among them Nocardia modore is a non-acid first organism. Uh, among all these the commonest uh, pathogen um, is uh, Nocardia asteroids and Nocardia brasiliensis. In Nocardia asteroids uh, species uh, produces uh, uh, star shaped colonies when they are growing on the culture media that's why they are known as nocardia asteroids and uh, as I mentioned already morphology resembles the rapidly growing mycobacteria and they are also seen like branching filamentous structures they are weakly acid fast by modified uh, Jordan staining where we have to use 1% sulfuric acid as decolorizer and they are uh, gram positive Mm, also, but usually we won't do the gram gram staining, but uh, structurally they are gram positive, but usually we demonstrate by doing the Jordan staining. And the pathogenesis of nocardia, they are soil saprophytes and usually people will acquire the infection from the exogenous infection. That is usually they enter into the body from the soil or from the environment, uh, not um, uh, endogenous like actinomyces they are present in the oral cavity and sometimes in genital tract also and the endogenous infection is possible but here that is not the possibility and they enter uh, through by means of inhalation and uh, exit through some of the lesions produced by these particular organisms they can spread to the lymphatics um, and from there to the blood and produces the hematogenous lesions they also produce abscess in the brain and nodal lesions in the skin and also the granular lesions in the uh, chest are produced by this particular group of organisms. And nocardiosis, uh, usually the nocardiosis uh, seen in the form of cutaneous form where you can see the local abscess and cellulitis and the lymphocutaneous lesions are produced. And subcutaneous lesions also produce in the form of uh, mycetoma. Usually this mycetoma will be discussed under the mycology because majority of the mycetoma lesions are produced by the fungal uh, um, organisms rather than the bacteria. So this mycetoma will be discussed as separate entity in your mycology. And next one is nocardiosis also produced followed by transplantation because the transplantation leads to the usage of some immunosuppressive agents. When the people are uh, on the immunosuppressive agents or people when suffering with certain cancerous conditions where the immunity is low, these nocardia species are responsible for nocardiosis. Next one is ocular nocardiosis uh, followed by trauma uh, to the eye uh, since they are present in the soil. So the trauma if it is contaminated with the soil it results in the ocular nocardiosis and most important and dangerous form of nocardiosis is a systemic nocardiosis uh, when the people are uh, suffering uh, with certain diseases chronic diseases or when they are on chronic treatment um, they may suffer with some kind of immunocompromised state so this immunocompromised state commonly seen in case of chronic usage of corticosteroids and post-transplantation immunosuppressive therapy 
and people who are suffering with tuberculosis and people who are suffering with HIV infection. All these people there is a possibility for the immunosuppression. So when these people inhale these organisms from the soil, uh, it may set up its own uh, course in the form of systemic nocardiosis. So here in the among this systemic nocardiosis, the commonest pre presentation is pulmonary nocardiosis where you can see the multiple confluent abscesses in the lung uh, responsible for the formation of empyema. This empyema uh, heals with uh, little or uh, no fibrosis and uh, this finally uh, uh, leads to uh, extra pulmonary, I mean le leads to the hematogenous spread of the infection and enter the brain and produces brain abscesses. So this is uh, from the site of primary site of uh, lungs, uh, they may spread to the extra pulmonary area also through the blood causes for uh, brain lesions also in this case. But all these are possible when the people are suffering with immunosuppressive state. Otherwise, uh, nocardiosis is not common among the normal individuals. So here you can see the fatal pulmonary nocardiosis where you can see the uh, diffuse uh, opacities in the lung fields because of M I mean empyema, the presence of empyema in the lungs. Uh, this one is lab diagnosis, the sputum, pus or biopsied material has to be collected. And do the gram staining by brown ben, uh, bren modification where the mycelial network are seen very faintly, you can observe that on gram staining. But if you do the acid fast staining with 1% H2SO4, you can see the, um, of, I mean, uh, uh, very slender filamentous structures you can see in red color that will show by, that will be shown by the acid fast staining that's a below photograph. You can appreciate the difference between gram staining report for this particular organisms and acid fast staining. And nocardi asteroids colony in tissues that is in uh, brown band stain. Uh, that is um, where you can see the central uh, uh, necrosis surrounded by this particular group of uh, organisms and in the utmost periphery of that particular uh, tissue, uh, you can see the all kinds of inflammatory cells. And culture, they are slow growing uh, aerobes that it will take one to two weeks. A nutrient agar produces dry, creamy, wrinkled colonies with orange pigment which are uh, star shaped that the third uh, uh, culture plate you can see that that kind of uh, uh, <coughs> colony morphology and in buffered yeast extract with polymyxin and vancomycin medium also we can see the growth and another type of medium used for this purpose is sabrose dextrose agar with chloramphenicol and that medium also uh, produces the colonies. So these are all, uh, you can see uh, the, in the laboratory as laboratory contaminant most of the times. So one thing you have to remember, they are slow aerobic, slow growing aerobic organisms and they produce a star shaped colonies when they are growing on the medium like nutrient agar. But they are not uh, fastidious, they are very simple organisms. Treatment, uh, the sulfonamides or cotrimoxazole has to be given for the longer periods. Cotrimoxazole with imipenem also be to, to be considered in severe cases, especially in the case of brain abscess, we have to consider uh, cotrimoxazole with uh, imipenem and a surgical drainage of the abscess if possible. If the skin abscess are there, we can do that. Um, and in brain abscess also if possible, we have to go for surgical drainage of this one. And uh, next to last one is the extrinsic allergic alveolitis produced by this um, Actinomyces species is, is all by means of inhalation of moldy vegetable matter, which is uh, seen in the form of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. That is uh, the, the alveolar uh, inflammation, which are due to the hypersensitivity to the uh, moldy vegetables contaminated with this actinomyces species. The synonyms for this particular condition is known as farmer's lung or uh, mushroom worker's lung or bagososis. So the farmers also by inhalation of vegetable matter are the causes for hypersensitive pneumonitis and mushroom workers by inhalation of the products from mushroom also uh, results in this hypersensitive pneumonitis. And next one is a bagososis. That means the people who are working in the cane sugar factories, uh, when they get exposed to the, any kind of material from the cane, uh, sugar cane, 
also will suffer with this one. And most of the times this hypersensitive pneumonitis is produced by a phenia recti vericula which is a thermophilic actomized species. So remember this hypersensitive pneumonitis is produced by varieties of uh, substances like uh, moldy vegetable matters, mushrooms and uh, sugar cane uh, factory people all will suffer with this one. But uh, some thermophilic uh, uh, actinomyces which can survive up to 50, de 50 degrees centigrade in the environment like phenia recti virgula caused for this hypersensitive pneumonitis. Uh, so this is another important uh, thing to remember about actinomyces which results in extensive allergic uh, alveolitis.